model on convergence is a very common problem in Embraer research using structural ecosystem models or any other more advanced models. A convergence problem can be a technical problem or it can be a model or specification issue, but nevertheless, these are typically really hard to troubleshoot for a beginner. The reason for uh, them being hard to troubleshoot is that often researchers don't have a firm grasp on what exactly is convergence and in which ways it can fail. To understand how we can fix possible convergence issues, we must start by understanding what does it mean when a model does not converge. Let's take a look at symptoms first. Why should an applied researcher care? When you run Stata or any other statistical software, you might get uh, output like this. So the computer just goes on forever and ever and ever, prints something called likelihood and never prints results. So we can leave this on for days or weeks or months. And unless there is a power outage, the computer will just print the likelihood and does not go anywhere. Another thing that you might see is this kind of error messages. So you might get some kind of error messages about derivatives or Hessen. Here is another one. Hessen can be calculated or you might get warnings, not specifically errors related to Hessen. Uh, this kind of uh, printout between the different iterations in the estimation, uh, in the maximum likelihood estimation. Or you might get uh, results, but you have these uh, not concave backed up. So can you trust those results when you have that, that notification or warning there? Non-convergence is a major problem in the sense that if your model doesn't converge, you generally cannot trust the results. You might get some results, but you don't know whether those results can be trusted at all. There are a couple of exceptions when non-convergence might not be a problem. The exception that I have in my mind has three elements. One, you must really understand what is the reason why the model doesn't converge. So you understand what the problem is and you decide to not care about the problem. So uh, you would need to understand then what are the consequences of con non-convergence. If the non-convergence only affects one parameter that you're not interested in, then you might decide that, that you go with the non-convergent model. And that leads to the third condition that you must understand not only what is the consequence, but you must also be able to say that the consequence of non-convergence in your particular case has no implications or no relevance for your research question. But if these three conditions are not true, then you generally should not trust any results from a non-convergent model. Let's take a look at what is non-convergent in more detail. The symptoms of non-convergence include a couple of things. When you look at the output, you might see a uh, for example, warnings. So Stata here tells us that the model has not converged. That's a pretty good indication that there's a convergence problem. Another thing that you often see is missing standard errors. So the period is a missing value in Stata. Here, uh, a variance estimate has a missing standard error. Another thing that you might see is extreme estimates. So, so some of the estimates are like hundreds or thousands time lar times larger than any other estimates. So the ballpark of some of the estimates is quite larger than any other estimates. Then uh, you have these not concave messages or generally any other messages about the Hessen matrix. So I'll, I'll talk about Hessen matrix in more detail in another video, but it is central to understanding some of the non-convergent problems. To understand what the, the, the thing, what is the, the, uh, the disease that causes these symptoms, we need to first understand what is convergence. So we can't understand non-convergence unless we understand what, is, what does it mean for the model to converge. And uh, this is uh, my list of four things that I understand what convergence means. So a model or a set of estimates or an optimization procedure, however you like to say it, converges uh, if the four conditions are true. 
and this is uh, written in, in terms of maximum likelihood estimation but it applies to any other numerical optimization technique or numerical estimation technique. So the first estimates must be exist for the model. So this is the statistical mathematical uh, uh, identification. Some models are impossible to estimate. For example, if you have one correlation, you cannot estimate two causal effects from that, those, that one correlation. That would not be identified. So does the solution even exist? Then uh, the estimates must exist using your data set. It is possible, for example, that your sample size is so small or your sample happens to be weird in, in some other way that the, the estimates don't exist for that sample. They would exist for the full population, but not for that sample. Then there's all kinds of computational problems. So how the computer works is that it, it starts with some kind of initial guess of what your parameters might be. It adjusts those initial guesses to make the likelihood statistic as large as possible. And that can fail in a number of different, different ways. And finally, it is possible, though not that likely, that the convergence check fails. So it is possible that your computer tells that the model has not converged, even if all other these three conditions are, are true. I'll show in a conceptual example in a moment. The inverse is also possible. So it is possible that your model de declare, your computer program declares the model to be converged, even if in reality the model, the computer has not found an optimal solution for your problem. So that can happen as well. So let's take a look at this, this analog of climbing a mountain. And, uh, and maximum likelihood estimation and any other numerical estimation is quite often, numerical optimization is quite often explained using the analog of mountain climbing. So the idea of maximum likelihood estimation is that you start somewhere, uh, somewhere at the base of the mountain and you move left and right and your task is to find the peak of the mountain here. And uh, to find the peak, uh, there must be some conditions that must be true. So uh, first of all, there must be a unique peak. To be able to say that we have found the peak, there must be one unique peak to be found. If there is no one unique peak, if there is, for example, a, a flat area, so there is no one unique point that is the peak, we would say that the model is not identified. The, there are multiple, multiple peaks, the peak is not unique. So this point here is equally highest as this point here. So we can't say that we have found the highest point because there is no single one highest point. The second problem is uh, empirical under-identification. It is possible that the peak exists for the mountain, the maximum of the likelihood function does exist, but it does not exist for your sample. So let's say that we do take a sample of this mountain, so we don't observe those parts, and now we don't observe the peak, we just observe two equally high points around the peak, and we don't know which one of those is the highest because they're equally high and therefore there is no unique peak to be found with these data. If we collect more data, if we are able to uncover this peak here using more data, then the problem would go away. So empirical identification uh, typically is a sample problem, but it can also happen for, for certain uh, population, or combination of population values, but that's not as common as, as a sample problem. Then there is the problem of numerical optimization and uh, this is something that uh, is perhaps the easiest to troubleshoot and this is perhaps one of the, uh, the more common things that are easily addressable. So we must find the peak. It is possible that the peak exists and the peak can be found using this data but there is still the task of actually finding where it is. And how the computer tries to find the peak or the maximum of the likelihood function, it starts from an initial guess. So let's say we start here. So that's our starting point. And we apply, apply rule, always climb uphill to find the peak. So we go, we go uphill, we go uphill, 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 and we found the peak. Okay, so we found the peak. This algorithm works well when we start from that side of the mountain. But what if we start from the other side? So, so we, we start here, we move, move up a bit, we move up a bit, we move up a bit, and uh, we find this flat area. So there's this, this flat area here, 
and uh, if we are in a flat area, we can't move uphill. So it's momentarily flat, there's no uphill, there are, the rule does not tell us where to go next, and this optimization fails. These kind of simple optimization problems can be sometimes uh, solved by using another optimization algorithm, another rule in this context. For example, we might have a better rule of uh, looking around, just go a bit to different directions and see where the ground starts to, uh, to elevate again. So I'll look around and move toward higher ground. Using that rule, we could find the peak. So it might be an algorithmic problem that can be uh, fixed by switching to another, problem, another algorithm. I sometimes get models to converge this way, but this is perhaps not the most common way of fixing these optimization problems. The more common problem is that when we find a peak, we might actually start so far away, we start from here, that we, we can't even see the peak. So the mountain is so far away that we can't see where it is. And if we can't see the mountain, then it is very, uh, it's impossible to actually find the peak. And, and this is the, uh, called the starting value problem. The starting value, the initial point where we start to climb the mountain, must be somewhere within the vicinity of the actual peak. Otherwise, the computer is very unlikely to find the peak within reasonable time. So this is the starting value problem. And then uh, another uh, problem that uh, we might face is that we must know whether we are on the peak or not. And uh, so how do we know that we're on the peak? We must have a rule for that. And uh, a typical rule looks like this. So uh, we are on top when ground is level and curves down on every direction. So that would work really well for this kind of uh, round peaks. So, so it's, it's flat on the top, we can, we can stand on flat ground, and if we take a step in any direction, we, go, we start to go, go down. So, so we can, we, whenever we go, whichever, whichever direction we go, we go downwards, but we are on a flat place. And uh, the flatness is uh, quantified by the slope or the first derivative, and they are stored for all dimensions of a problem, in, the, in a gradient vector. So if we are on a two-dimensional space like, uh, like we would be when we move uh, north and south and east and west, so we have two dimensions, then we would have a gradient vector with, uh, with two elements. So how much does the, uh, the, the elevation change when we move uh, a little north or a little east, for example? And the curvature is uh, quantified by the second derivatives which are stored in the Hessen matrix. And uh, the Hessen matrix is, uh, is a bit more, more complex. If we have this kind of like north and south, east and west, uh, then we have the curvature when we go north or, or south. We have the curvature when we go east or west. And then we have a curvature when we go northeast, for example. So uh, we have uh, three different elements in that Hessen matrix. Okay, so when might that fail? For example, we might have a mountain that looks like this. So we have a sharp peak. So there is a unique highest point, but the point is not flat ground, it is peak. And if it's a peak, like a right, like sharp angle, it doesn't have a slope and it doesn't have curvature because it's, it's kind of like an angle, it's not a curve. So uh, the calculation of the slope and the curvature, the gradient and the Hessian would fail in this point even, we are, even if we are on the peak. And in rare instances, you might encounter this problem, then you might be able to fix, uh, switch to a different uh, convergence check to, to actually notice that you are on the top instead of saying that compute, computational failed and printing out an error message. Another issue is that uh, how close to the peak must, be, must we be to say that we are actually on the peak? So if you think about a real mountain that is a kind of like a, a flatter top like this one, there is, there is one unique peak. So there is one grain of, of sand, one small rock that is, the high, that is higher than any other uh, pieces of, of, of sand or pieces of, of rock. And uh, 
then, then how would you know that you are standing on that one specific highest place? So normally we would not require that. We would say that when we are close enough to the peak, let's say that, that it looks like it's flat, it may, might not be exactly flat, it looks like it curves down every direction, it might not exactly be that, and then we declare that we must be on the peak. So if we are actually climbing a mountain, we might say that if we're here, we are on the peak, we might be here, we are still happy, we say we are on the peak, even if the peak is over here. So in practice, we, we are trying to get close to the peak because finding the exact peak would take forever. We can always add more and more and more decimals to our estimates to make them more and more precise. But sometimes we decide that, well, if we have five decimals, we are, we are happy. We declare that we are on the peak instead of going for 50 more, 50 more decimals of precision in our estimate. This relates to, uh, to something called tolerance. So if we look at our, fine, uh, our, our peak, we might have a task low tolerance. And the low tolerance would say that we must be very close to the peak to say that we actually got to the peak. And uh, then uh, uh, a bit higher tolerance would say that, okay, if we're somewhere in that area, we are on the peak. Adjusting tolerance values, you can change the tolerance uh, so that you would be within the tolerance already in your starting, value, starting position. So if we adjust the tolerance to cover the entire mountain, including the base, then we would always say that we're on the peak, but that's not very useful. Adjusting the tolerance will make your model converge, but it will also decrease the quality of your convergence. And uh, typically adjusting tolerance uh, is, should only be reserved for when you really know what you're doing, because it is possible that you uh, get estimates that are, are bad, it's really not converged, but the computer says that it is converged because you just make the tolerance so large. Okay, so that's the conceptual explanation of these different things uh, that, that what does it mean for the model to converge. And here are some of the, uh, of the problems that you might encounter and some of the, uh, the, uh, the solutions to these problems. So after this conceptual explanation of convergence uh, through the uh, metaphor of mountain climbing, we are ready to move on to uh, the more specific technical topics on how exactly you identify non-convergence and why exactly a model might not converge.